Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about the summary of chapter two, Head First Java. Uh, so the key takeaways from this chapter are actually procedural versus object-oriented development. Basically, how object-oriented development is better than procedural development, and then classes versus objects, uses of main methods, global variables and methods in Java and Java archive files. Okay. Let's go through procedural versus object-oriented development. So in order to uh, show how object-oriented development is better than procedural development, what we're going to do is we're going to solve the problem. So the problem is we have a GUI application which has three shapes, circuit, square, and triangle. And whenever a shape, uh, irrespective of circuit, square, or triangle is clicked, it rotates 360 degrees around the center of rectangle around it and it plays an AIF sound particular to that particular shape. So in procedural, you will create a class, you will call that class in view one, let's call that GUI. And then you will create two functions, uh, rotate and play sound. So they will take shape, num shape number as in, well, that will indicate what the shape of the object is and based on the shape, uh, we will rotate and play the sound. So this will be procedural way of doing things. In object-oriented, uh, we will create three objects, uh, circle, square, and rectangle. Circle, square, and triangle, sorry. One each for, one for each shape. And they will have their own version of rotate and play sound. So that's how we will do in object-oriented. Let's say our problem statement gets revised in a way that now we have a fourth shape called amoeba, uh, which rotates in a different way, in a way that it rotates like a clock. Rather than rotating around a center, it rotates, uh, let's say, with a point which is close to its boundary, like one arm of a clock. Bottom line is it, it rotates in a different way than the usual rotation by the three shapes. And it plays mp3 file rather than AF file. So in procedural, uh, in the same class, in the similar same functions, you will now add if condition. If a shape name is amoeba, you need to rotate in a different way because for other shapes, the way you rotate is uh, similar, right? And similarly for play sound as well, now because you're playing mp3 file for amoeba, you'll have to have another if condition. So if you observe, uh, we had already tested this particular class, particularly these two methods. Now we have changed those methods. So we'll have to test them again. So in procedural, you can see it's not that flexible in the sense that uh, when you have uh, added a new sort of feature, I would say, you are supposed to test the code that was already working. So there's an extra effort, okay? So in object-oriented world, what you would do is you would create just new class, okay? Which will have two functions, rotate and play sound and uh, inside rotate, you'll have the code to rotate amoeba in a particular way and then play sound, you'll play the mp3 file. So, so if you uh, notice, we did not touch the classes that we had created earlier. Class, square, rectangle, square, circle and triangle, they all remain the same. So the benefit is we don't have to test those classes again because we have not touched them. So object oriented is as you can see from this example, object oriented is more flexible in terms of making changes on top of what you already have. But there's one thing, if you see in all our four classes, we have the same function. So if you see these classes, circle, square, and rectangle, they all play and rotate in a similar way, right? So there's a code duplication that's still happening in the object oriented uh, development. But object-oriented development helps you to avoid duplication through something called inheritance. So let's say we had these classes, circle, square, rectangle, amoeba. Uh, they had these functions, rotate, play, sound, in all of them. We know that uh, rotate and play sound is uh, similar for circle, square, and triangle. So what we have done is we have created one class shape, and we have uh, moved the function rotate and play sound into it. And then we have created subclasses, all four subclasses that inherits from shape. In case of Amoeba, what we do is we override the rotate and place on because 
what amoeba inherited from super class is not going to work for this particular class because this has its own behavior so you have a way to override it as well so it will have its own uh, overridden method of rotate and play sound so if we can summarize the benefits of object oriented developments over procedural way of doing things is it provides you flexibility and extensibility as in if you want to add new feature to your already to your application it's easier to do uh, it's easier to do that compared to procedural way of doing things and yeah and uh, another thing is when you extend your program you don't have to necessarily touch the already tested code so there's a so you save effort as far as testing is concerned and then you can avoid code duplication through inheritance in object oriented so that was uh, the difference between procedural and object oriented development uh, let's move to the second uh, key takeaway of this particular chapter which is class versus object so classes are not objects class is actually a blueprint of objects or uh, it is used to create objects things that object knows about itself are called instance variables or state and things that object does are called methods of behavior so if you look at this particular example suppose we have a dog object it has its name breed age so these are the things dog knows about itself so these are instance variables and what it does it barks so that's the method this is how you can think about instance variables and methods okay so that was class versus object let's move to uses of main methods so we already uh, if you have seen the summary of chapter one uh, you would know that uh, main method is used to launch the Java application but other than that there is one more utility of main method you can use this main method to test the Java class so let's say you created this particular class called dog uh, it has these instance variable name create age and it has this method so you can create another class called dog test you have this main method in that particular class and then you can create one instance of that particular object that you want to test and you can assign instance variables through dot operator and you can also uh, trigger the method on the object again using the dot operator so other than launching java application you can use main method to test java classes as well okay let's move to the next key takeaway of this chapter which is global variables and methods so there is no such thing as global variable or method in java but if you define a method as public and static uh, it behaves like global methods because you can access it from anywhere uh, without creating instances of the object and similarly if you define a variable as public static and final they behave as globally available constants okay so those are you know ways to if you need global variables and methods uh, that's how you can achieve them in java now coming to this jar file so as we talked about in the first chapter java application can contain thousands or even millions of java classes and java files so let's say you want to give java application to someone right how would you do that so one of the way of doing is is through this jar file so you can create jar file which is based on pkg format so it is a compressed file of all the java classes it has one manifest file which contains the name of the class uh, which has the main method which will be used to launch the application so that's the jar file so that's it for chapter 2 uh, we'll see you on chapter 3